my brothers and sisters in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Aaron Jones Jr., the senior pastor of the Cornerstone Church, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It is with joy, uh, honor, and really distinct privilege that I take this opportunity and this time to congratulate uh, uh, my dear friend and my brother. And I say that uh, with the sincerest of heart and the sincerest of spirit uh, for Dr. Aldrin Sattler has been more than a friend to myself and to my family for now over 50 years. We met some 50 years ago or more while uh, marching in the Marching Wolverine Band at Morris Brown College and uh, I, I've, I've known him uh, throughout those years, there was a period of time when we lost connection, but then we made connection, I think it was back around um, 84, 85, somewhere in there. And ever since then, we have been extremely close. I value very much his friendship. I value his brotherhood. I value his companionship, for he has meant a lot to myself and my family. Uh, everything that is important uh, and big that has happened in our lives uh, since the time we met, he has found a way to be an intricate part of it. Um, uh, when, I, when I came to Philadelphia, when I moved here, um, I had been here, I guess, about two months, and uh, I looked up one Sunday, Sattler was walking in the door. That thrilled my heart. I'll never forget that. Uh, and not only that, but when we marched in our new church uh, in Atlanta, Sattler was there. When I went back to preach for the mortgage burning of the church uh, that I built there, uh, Sattler was there. Uh, he's been there all along, so I thank God for him. Some people, listen, walk into your life and they never walk out. And Sattler has been one of those persons who have walked into my life and refused to walk out. So congratulations, man, on 39 years. You have stood the test of time. You have survived many storms in this life, but God has been with you. And I pray, I keep praying for you every day that God will continue to bless you, that God will continue to keep you, and that he will forever be with you to lead to guide and direct you in the way that he would have you to go. So congratulations. God bless you, man. Love you. Tell Gene, we said hello. Bless you. 
Greetings, everyone. It is such a pleasure to come and congratulate my husband, our pastor, Pastor Aldrin Sattler, of 39 years in the ministry. It's been some uphills and downs, but through it all, God has taken care of us and brought us through. And the most important thing about it is I have a man of God that loves God and not afraid to preach and teach his word. He will not compromise when it comes to the Word of God. And that's what I think that has carried us on. We thank all the churches that we have ministered in. They've been a great support to us. And now at Church of New Beginning, we get a new vision every day, a new start every day with Church of New Beginning. So we're really proud to have a man of God that even though we're not in the building, we're still carrying on the gospel of Jesus Christ and his faithfulness to Church of New Beginning and to Pastor Sattler. I hope and pray that we have many more years, maybe 39 more, maybe in the church, maybe not, but God's word will still continue through his ministry and his love for the word of God. I again say I'm honored to be his wife. I'm honored to uh, be a member of Church of New Beginning where every day we get a new start under the leadership of Pastor Sattler. Again, Pastor Sattler, I congratulate you for 39 years. Hopefully you will have 39 more. God bless you. I love you. And keep preaching and teaching the word of God. Pastor Al Sattler, Church of New Beginnings in Conyers, Georgia. This is your friend, Dantes, from Detroit. And I just want to join in celebrating you today on your 39th year of preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to say this, and it's so true. You're an extraordinary man. You're an extraordinary father. You're an extraordinary husband. Uh, you're an extraordinary pastor. You're an extraordinary uh, mentor. You're an extraordinary friend. And I want you to know that the only word that can describe you is extraordinary because you are a man of many talents and you've been graced to have longevity in the kingdom of God. And I just thank God for you. I thank God for uh, the pastor that you are. You've shown me a lot of things. You've taught me a lot of things as it relates to ministry and life. And I thank God for you. And when I'm praying, I say, Lord, I thank God for Pastor Al Sadler because he's been such a blessing in my life. And we would not be where we are today in ministry if it had not been for the connection that you and I have in the vineyard. So I thank God for you. I praise God for you. I wish that we could have come to Georgia and had a wonderful celebration to celebrate this milestone in your life. But here we are, such is life. And so we are still celebrating here in Detroit with you and congratulating you as you celebrate 39 years of preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I had to look, had to see, according to Google, in 1981, the price of gas was about $1.25. And I want you to know it's going up. But I'll tell you what else is going up. That's your impact in the kingdom. God bless you. And I will be praying for you and see you soon. Until you bless me. Well, I gotta stop long enough to ask the question. What kind of blessing did Jacob want? Well, uh, let's see if we can see it here in the text. I already told you that his father blessed him 20 years ago. But right now he's saying, I'm not going to let you go uh, until you bless me. Well, uh, based on my reading and understanding of the word, Jacob was a well-off man. He was rich and didn't need no more financial blessing. So what kind of blessing was he asking for? Well, the Bible began to tell us in the text here. And in other words, what Jacob was saying was that I want to change his heart. See, when I left my brother, I was a trickster. I had tricked my brother. You want to be a little bit better? 
in a while. In other words, if I know that there's just some crumbs there, yeah. I will know whatever's in the crumbs yeah. is also yeah. in the bread. Yeah. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. Well, let me go on to a close. Oh, yeah. I remember when I was a little boy. Oh, yeah. Down at my home church, Peace Chapel Baptist Church. Oh, yeah. The third Sunday in August was Homecoming Sunday. Yeah. And every Saturday before uh, the third Sunday in August, oh, yeah. my grandmother would be preparing a meal for Homecoming. Yeah. She would be making a pound cake. And when she made the pound cake, she would put some flour in the pound cake. She would put some eggs in the pound cake. She would put some sugar in the pound cake. She would put a little flavor in the pound cake. But she knew my cousin Aubrey and I would want some of the cake. So we couldn't eat the cake until Sunday. But this is Saturday night and we didn't want to wait till Sunday to get the whole cake. But what mama would do, she would take an egg shaker. She would take some of the batter from the big pan. She would pour some over in the cake pan. She would take some more and put it over in the egg shaker. And she would put both of them in the oven at the same time. In other words,
enough for everybody else. But you also got enough to bless your neighbors with. Uh, you know, if you got an overflow, that means you can bless me too. That's why I don't mind, y'all, that uh, when I find out that uh, some pastor or something that I know uh, that's been blessed by the Lord, uh, you know what that reminds me? I don't get jealous. Uh, I just get excited because I know that if he's at May's house, uh, if he's at Joe's house, uh, he's on my street. Come on, somebody. And I know that I'm in line uh, for a blessing. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but uh, one of these days, uh, I'm looking forward to the fact uh, that I'm going to live off of uh, the overflow. Uh, I know some of y'all might be saying, uh, I'm tired uh, of living from paycheck to paycheck. Uh, but God said, uh, one of these days, uh, we're going to live off of the overflow. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but before you get to the overflow, uh, you might have to go through a little stress. Uh, you might have to go through uh, ups and downs. Uh, but I remember as a child growing up, uh, my grandmama used to sing a song. Uh, she said, I'm so glad uh, that trouble uh, don't last always. Uh, anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, but when I'm trying to tell somebody uh, that God uh, will take your problem uh, and turn it into a prosperity because she didn't have nothing. She just had a little oil. But God took a little bit to her and made a whole lot out of it. But see, if when you put it to her in the hands of God, He will. Anybody know He will? He will make a way out of no way. You see, a basketball in my hand is only worth for about twenty-nine or thirty dollars. But in the hands of LeBron James, it's worth a million dollars. Can I get a witness? See, when I can't handle it, I take it to the Lord, and He can handle it. Because Jesus, He can multiply. Can I get a witness? He can take a little. And make a whole lot out of it. And I'm so glad that I know who he is. Anybody here know him? I call him Jesus. The Mary little baby. The lady of the valley. Somebody said, y'all, that he was brighter than a morning star. But I want to stop by to tell you, not only is he bridge, a bridge over trouble water, but he's my food. When I get hungry, he's also water to drink. But not only that, John, but he's my lawyer in a courtroom. But most of all, y'all, he's a good God my He's my savior. And I'm so glad that he saved me. Can I get a witness? I'm going to my seat, John. When I tell you this story, I'm a country boy. And I grew up in a town that when we all have running water in a house. Some of my grandparents and some of my uncles and aunts used to have to go to a well and they would let the bucket down into the water and they would draw the water up and then they had a pail and they would take the pail and pour the water in the pail and take it back to the house. But one day uh, there were two buckets uh, on their way to a whale uh, and one of the buckets uh, said to the other bucket uh, you know I get depressed uh, I get down and out uh, because uh, every time uh, we come to the whale uh, we always come empty uh, but the other bucket said uh, well I take pride in myself uh, because I realize uh, that no matter how empty uh, I come to the whale uh, I always go back full. Good evening, y'all. I'm out of here. But I know the Lord who will make a way home. Has he made a way for you? He will. Do you know he will? Don't fool me now. I know the Lord who will make a way home. But I don't have to. Go on the testimony of what my grandmama said. I don't have to go on the testimony of my mama and my dad. 
preaching in July of 1981 and my, uh, my mother's sister, one of her sisters were um, a member of the let me see West Hunter Street Baptist Church in Atlanta where the, the late Reverend Dr. David Ralph David Abernathy was the uh, pastor and so my, my aunt was a very progressive type person and she always wanted me to be around very influential people so one day, um, she asked him, because they were good friends, asked him if uh, I could come to the church and preach as a young preacher. And I guess that meant preaching probably less than a year. And she, he, and he said, yes, and I'll let your nephew come and preach one of the 8 o'clock services. And she said, no, I want him to preach the 11 o'clock service when most of the people are there. So he decided he would agree to that. But before he would let me come and preach, he wanted to spend some time with me. And so sometime prior to me coming to preach that Sunday, um, I had the opportunity of sitting down with him for probably about an hour, uh, just sharing about things in the ministry. I didn't think too much of it at that time, uh, but as I've been in the ministry and as time has passed, you know, I just valued that particular uh, conversation more and more. And one of the things that he told me was, um, 
he was saying that there are various kinds of people in your church. Uh, some are educated, some are not educated. Um, and he focused on a term that he used. He called this lady, um, which could be in any church, uh, that would be that would not be educated, uh, but just love the Lord. And he called her Aunt Jane. And his his thing was, he said, I don't care about the lawyers, the teachers, and the other people that are in your church. Don't forget to feed Aunt Jane before you go. And what that meant was, Aunt Jane was not concerned, he said, about Greek, Hebrew, and all of the fancy words. All Aunt Jane wanted to know was, how do I make it from one Sunday to the next? And he said, don't for ever forget that there is always an Aunt Jane in your church. And she needs to know that, so make sure that you inspire her. And so there was another uh, lesson that he taught me about. There was an older man in the church who couldn't hear very well. And um, he wouldn't pay his offering to anybody but Dr. Abernathy. He said because he couldn't understand what anybody else was saying. But what he didn't realize was Dr. Abernathy was speaking through a PA system. So that's the only reason why he could really hear <laughs> Uh, you know, understand what he was saying, but he would come to the pulpit every Sunday and give him the offering, would not put it in an offering um, pan because he said, I don't trust those other people. Um, I can't hear what they're saying. I don't understand what they're saying. He said, but I can hear you. You're the only person in this church that I can understand. And so I'm giving you my offering uh, to you. So I guess over the years, um, I've reflected back many times about the, um, the lesson that I um, learned from Dr. Abernathy. In, I think it was November 1976, my grandmother on my mother's side passed away, and he was the pastor um, of my aunt at the time, and he came to the funeral. And after the funeral, it is a cultural uh, thing with black people to have what is known as a repast after the um, funeral service. So we'll go to either to somebody's house, or you stay at the church, and everybody served dinner. Well, we went back to my grandmother's house, and Dr. Abernathy, um, came by the house and he stayed. Well, my best friend uh, from growing up is a guy by the name of Gregory Levitt uh, who owns a funeral home in Conyers and his father was handling my grandmother's service and he said to me, he said, well, I can't believe that Dr. Abernathy stayed here uh, hanging out with us guys. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, this guy is a civil rights icon and he's head of the SCLC and I just can't believe that he's hanging out in Conyers with us. I said, man, that's no big deal. I said, he's just Aunt Annie's pastor. And so that's just the way I saw him over the years. Uh, it's just Aunt Annie's pastor. And now with the uh, coming out of the uh, Selma movie, I'm just so glad that I had an opportunity to spend some time with him.